Hello, this is Dr. Omenda. We are going to briefly this from the brachial plexus. Brachial plexus. So, um, the brachial plexus usually form from the spinal nerves. Okay, and um, we are going to discuss the branches, applied anatomy, and how really these brachial plexus are formed. So this is the spinal cord. It's housed within the vertebral canal and it has an outer white matter containing myelinated axons and an inner gray matter containing a collection of neuronal cell bodies. The gray matter is divided into anterior horn. Could, uh, anterior horn which contains the cell bodies of motor neurons and posterior horns containing the um, um, cell bodies of interneurons. From this posterior horn, three nerve roots um, join or rather bring information into the posterior horn and these sensory nerve roots have their cell bodies within the dorsal root ganglia. And from the anterior horn, you have the exiting of the motor nerve roots Okay, and the cell will design the anterior horn. So basically, the sensory root and motor root together form a spinal nerve. So a root can be either motor or sensory, but a nerve is both motor and sensory. So after you form a spinal nerve, you have the division of the nerve into anterior rami or ventral rami to innervate muscles within the ventral compartments and posterior rami to innervate uh, structures within the posterior surface or rather posterior surface of the body. So basically you need to understand these concepts for you to uh, be able to understand how these brachial plexus are formed. So the roots are either sensory or motor nerve and the spinal nerve divides into ventral rami and dorsal rami and rami contain both motor and sensory. So um, how do you form brachial plexus? You have the roots of the brachial plexus of spinal nerves at the level of C5 vertebra to T1. And these are referred to as the roots of the brachial plexus. Then these roots will form trunk. How do they form trunk? Shortly after they emerge from the intervertebral foramina, these five roots, C5 to T1, unite to form three trunks. How do you form the three trunks? C5 and C6 unite to form upper trunk. C7 continues as the middle trunk, while C8 and T1 unite to form the lower trunk. Now, from these trunks, we get divisions. Each of the trunk splits up into an anterior and a posterior division. Anterior divisions usually supply flexor muscles, while posterior divisions supply extensor muscles. So, from the divisions, we form now the cords of the brachial plexus. And these cords usually accompany the axillary artery. So how do we form the cords? Remember, since they're accompanying the axillary artery, the cord that is lateral to the artery is the lateral cord. Posterior to axillary artery is the posterior cord. And medial to axillary artery is the medial cord. How do we form these cords? Each um, trunk was giving us an anterior and posterior division. So all the, the anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunk form the lateral cord, while the posterior divisions from all the three trunks will form the posterior cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk becomes the medial cord. So what are the branches from the lateral cord? The lateral cord gives us lateral pectoral nerve. Root value is C5 to C7. This innervates pectoralis major. Then we also have musculocutaneous C5 to C7 innervates muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. Biceps brachii, brachialis, coracobrachiali. Then we have the lateral root to the median nerve C5 to C7. So these are the branches from the lateral cord. Lateral pectoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, and lateral branch to the median nerve. Remember median nerve innervates the, uh, most of the muscles in the flexor compartments, the lateral muscles in the flexor compartment of the forearm. We go to the medial cord. What are the branches? Medial pectoral nerve. Root value is C8 to T1. 
medial pectoral uh, nerve innervates pectoralis minor and pectoralis major. Then we have medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Okay, medial cutaneous nerve of arm then innervates uh, sensory innervation to medial surface of arm. The medial cutaneous nerve of forearm provides sensory innervation to the medial aspect of forearm. Arm is what we call the brachial forearm anti brachial. And the nerve, the root value CH2 T1. It innervates flexors in the ulnar side of the forearm and also innervates the um, intrinsic muscles of the uh, intermediate compartment of the hand, the lumbricals and the interosse. So then lastly, we have the medial root to the median nerve. So these five branches are from the medial cord. Medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, and medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, ulnar nerve, and medial root of median nerve. Remember lateral cord gave us lateral pectoral nerve, lateral division of, or rather part of median nerve, and um, muscular cutaneous nerve. So we continue. The posterior cord has five branches. You have the upper subscapula, C5 to C6, supplying subscapularis muscle. This is the muscle in the subscapular fossa on the anterior part of the scapula. Then thoracodosal nerve, which is C6 to C8, innervating the latissimus dorsi muscle. Lower subscapular nerve that innervates subscapularis and teres major. Subscapularis has dual innervation from upper and lower subscapular nerve. Teres major only gets from lower subscapular. Thoracodosal nerve innervates latissimus dorsi. So what are the other two branches from the posterior cord? We have axillary nerve, root value C5 to C6, meaning it comes from spinal nerve C5 to C6, and it provides motor to deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle. And also, it has sensory role. It provides skin as uh, innervation to the skin over the deltoid muscle. That's what we call the rudimentary badge region. And then this axillary nerve forms the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. Then the last branch from the posterior cord is the radial nerve, which is the root value C5 to T1. Radial nerve has motor uh, functions, supplying the muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm and forearm. So in the arm, we have anconius and triceps brica, and in the forearm, we have the extensors of the wrist and extensors of the digits as well as supinator muscle. Then, um, we also have brachioridialis that is supplied by um, radial nerve. Now, sensory innervation, we have um, sensory um, branches from the radial nerve. So, posterior cutaneous nerve of arm, posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm, and we also have sensory innervation of the hand, the dorsum, of the lateral three and a half surface of the hand is innervated by radial nerve. So this is what we have discussed, that brachial plexus come from the roots C6, C7, C8, and T1. Now, the roots, superior roots, C5 and C6 join to form the superior trunk. C7 continues as the middle trunk. C8 and T1 join to form inferior trunk. Each of these three trunks divide to form anterior and posterior division. Anterior and posterior division. Anterior and posterior. Each of them form anterior and posterior. Then how do we form the codes? The anterior division from superior and middle cord form, uh, uh, from superior and middle trunk form the lateral cord. Posterior division from all the three trunks. Posterior division from all the three trunks form the posterior cord. And lastly, the anterior division of the inferior trunk forms the medial cord. What are the branches of the lateral uh, cord? Now, remember, we talked of lateral pectoral to pectoralis major. We talked of musculocutaneous to muscles in the anterior compartment of arm, and it gives a lateral root that contributes to median nerve. Which nerves come from the posterior cord? So we have upper and lower subscapula, as well as thoracodosal to latissimus dorsi. Then the posterior cord terminates by dividing into axillary that innervates deltoid and teres minor, and radial that has both motor and sensory 
uh, uh, motor to posterior compartment of arm and forearm and sensory on the posterior part of arm and forearm as well as the dorsum of the three and a half part of the hand. Then the medial cord is going to give us the medial cutaneous of arm and forearm as well as the medial pectoral nerve to pectoralis major and we also have the ulna nerve. So those are the branches of the medial cord. Of note, we have long thoracic nerve from C5, C6, C7. This nerve innervates serratus, anterior muscle, which usually causes um, retraction of the scapula. Causes protraction of the scapula. So suprascapular nerve um, to super, supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle comes from the um, superior trunk. And then we have the nerve to subclavius coming from the superior trunk. Okay, so basically this is how you explain the formation of brachial plexus plus the root values and what they innervate. And this is also explained here. C5 and C6 form superior trunk. C7 continues as middle trunk. C8, T1 form inferior trunk. All the, and, and all the posteriors form posterior cord. Posterior divisions form posterior cord. Anterior divisions of the two trunks form lateral cord. And anterior division of the inferior forms the middle cord and the branches. So branches from the lateral cord, lateral pectoral, muscular cutaneous, and lateral roots to median. Branches for the medial cord, um, medial cutaneous of arm and forearm, medial pectoral nerve, ulnar nerve, and a medial branch to median nerve. And branches from the posterior cord, you see stars. S, the first S and the last S, upper and lower subscapular. T is thoracodosal, A, axillary, N, radial, stars. Okay. So again, that's. Uh, the same thing we have just discussed. So the codes are around the brachial artery. The um, divisions and the trunks are in the scalene triangle, while the roots are at the level of the vertebra. So what are the applied aspects? We have postfix and prefix uh, brachial plexus. We have abs palsy and club face paralysis. Postfix. We know that brachial plexus C5 to T1. Postfix is when you have T2 contributing to the brachial plexus, but it begins at C6, C6 to T2 instead of C5 to T1. That's postfix. Then prefix will be um, C4 to C8. So we have abs palsy. When you injure the superior part of the plexus, it's called abs palsy. And this is mainly due to when you increase the angle between the neck and the shoulder. So C5, C6 roots will be affected, and the muscles of the shoulder and the arm are usually affected. So when you increase the angle between the shoulder and the head, especially during delivery in babies with shoulder dystocia, they tend to get abs palsy. And abs palsy gives you waiter stip or quarter stip position. This waiter stip position is characterized by motor loss. So the shoulder is adducted, the arm is medially rotated, and the elbow is extended. Usually there's an associated sensory loss on the lateral aspect of the upper limb. So waiter stiff position, the shoulder is adducted, arm is internally rotated, the forearm is pronated and the elbow is extended. So the forearm is extended at the elbow. Uh, biceps reflex is usually absent. So this is abs paralysis. Adduction and internal rotation of the shoulder, elbow is extended and pronation. So again, that's abs paralysis, adduction, internal rotation, shoulder, elbow extended and then there is pronation. So then you go to clump case paralysis. This is when you injure the inferior part of the brachial plexus involving C8 and T1 caused by excessive abduction of the arm. So it's less common compared to superior uh, part of plexus injury in abs palsy. So here you get motor loss to the small muscles of the hand, the lumbricals and interosses because they're innervated by ulnar nerve, and ulnar nerve is CHT1 roots, and these are the ones affected by clunkies. Then there'll be sensory loss at the medial aspect of the upper limb. Okay, so when you grasp something, when you fall, or delivery of a child with the upper limb first, you get to injure the inferior roots of brachial plexus, and that gives you claw hand. And claw hand has hyperextension of metacarpophalangeal joints and flexion of interphalangeal 
joints because of 